What do you have here, Tyler? I have a very large vehicle for us today. It is a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. As you can tell, two L's, <laughs> it's a little bit longer than the regular Grand Cherokee and where that really comes in handy is on the inside, which we will show you. We hope that you like the change of scenery that we brought to you. It took us a while to get here. <laughs> if you have been with the channel for a little bit of time, you know we are in Alabama because we come here for Christmas every year. But if you go about 200 yards that way, we're in Florida. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's show them what you get with the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Take me down. Would you like to win our Miata? Well, today I'm going to tell you just how to do that. If we make it to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by May of 2024, which is our five year YouTube anniversary, it's going to be given to one of you lucky subscribers. Wait! Uh, so make sure to subscribe. Now we're going to talk about towing. So, this Jeep Grand Cherokee has a 3.6 liter V6. So it can tow actually an impressive 6,200 pounds with a towing capacity with a towing package. What can the 5.7 tow? 7,200 pounds. So depending on the engine configuration you get with your Grand Cherokee L, depends on how much you're going to be able to tow. I mean that is pretty impressive for a Jeep Grand Cherokee. There are a lot of things that I really like about the frontal interior of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Specifically, I can't see that. Do you want to show them this? So, there is an additional screen for the passenger with this configuration of Jeep Grand Cherokee L. So you have, you can hook up an HDMI so you can watch like movies and whatnot, play or video Or play your games. Xbox! Yeah, that's what I would be doing. You have the navigation, if you click the camera, it shows you the rear view camera. Why wouldn't you want to see that? And then you can also click up here to open up the navigation and then you can just follow along with your journey. One thing that really impressed me about that is that from the driver's seat, there is zero percent chance you can see it. Like you just, you can't see it at all. The one thing that I'm really impressed with with the safety features of the Grand Cherokee Overland, um, which is not something that I absolutely love, but it is very customizable. If you go up here, a few clicks, because we were playing around with it, there's the safety and driving features. There is emergency braking settings, active lane management setting, traffic sign assist, and it just keeps going. And then you can go low, medium, high on almost all of the sensors, which does make that one of the greatest features that I've seen on a modern vehicle. What do you say we take her to the back seats? I am sitting comfortably in the back seats. And speaking of comfortably, the leather that you get with the Overland is really nice. And especially if you can get close to the stitching, I really like what Porsche would call a deviated stitching. It is very comfortable. The seat, I mean, it is a captain's chair. It doesn't have a lot of bolstering, so you can slide around, but it is comfortable. I've ridden it after many, many miles, and it is nice. You do have your own HVAC controls. Get your own heated seats back here. Oh, speaking of back here, do you want to go to the back seats? I thought you were taking us to the back seats. We're not even in the backest of the back seats. I told you I'd bring you to the back seats. We are in the backest of the backest <laughs> seats. What do you think about the backest of the back seats? So you are just over six feet. My knees touch. You had ample leg room up in the front or middle seat. Yes, I'm going to go with middle seat there. Uh, and I, my knees are touching, but they're, the middle seats are adjustable. You can move them forward and back. You have plenty of room back there. I would say in the backest of the backest seats, 
it's not going to be a place you want to sit for a 1500 mile road trip but your kids would like it but it is a it is very comfortable for third row this is really the the only car that i've seen that has third row seats that fit that, adults that fit adults so if you are not into van life but you need six seats the grand cherokee l is a fantastic place i will say though as a large man it is hard to get in and out it would be Maybe if I was a bit more physically fit, I could be nimble enough, but... I would say it's not optimal, but it is comfortable enough for a family of six uh, with six adults. I mean, it, it really does work well. What do you say we have this thing out on the road? Yes! Okay, there's something about American vehicles that have gone into this knob shifting, and I have to say, I don't especially like it. But one thing I do like about the Jeep Grand Cherokee L is it's got some get up and go. For having a 3.6 liter, <laughs> it, it does get up and go. It will go to red line and the red line, it does get a more angrier and angrier and then it shifts. <laughs> it's, the, it's one of the nicest redlining American vehicles. It is the nicest redlining American vehicle. <laughs> That you have driven? Uh, that I have driven. Beyond that... <laughs> Sitting inside of the Dream Grand Cherokee, the fit and finish is nice. The seats aren't luxury exotic. Yep. But it's not a Bentley. No, but they are American comfortable. Yes, it is a very high tier American luxury car. The dash is leather, nice soft surface. You got this nice wood grain. <laughs> nice. Nice wood grain. <laughs> it is a nice wood grain. I do really like your screen that you have on that side for taking this on a trip, which is, let's be honest, part of the reason why it was built yep. was to be able to transport, hurl your family across the country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if hurl's the right word because I didn't mean that it could do it with some pace. <laughs> I really like the uh, panoramic sunroof. All of those safety features that we were kind of enamored with at the beginning uh, get a little bit annoying to me. The lane keep assist is good when you're going down the interstate, but when you're just driving around and there's lines going every which way because it's a residential road, the car gets a little bit confused and angry at you. Yep. It does have the McIntosh stereo speakers nice it sounds good um because this is the l version it is a little bit longer yep than the regular grand cherokee it bigger not, is always better it does not feel that way though the turning radius is the same the feel when you're behind the drivers when you're in the driver. <laughs> Behind the driver. <laughs> it would feel a little bit weird because your arms would be really long into the steering wheel. <laughs> but uh, the, the feel of it, it doesn't feel big. It doesn't feel any bigger than a regular Grand Cherokee. And we have put some seat time in a regular Grand Cherokee. Yes, we have. Why don't you get behind the wheel of this 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L? Overland Edition. And you can tell me what you think about sitting in this seat. Nice and leisure, <laughs> just like we always do. Oh, we're doing this again. <laughs> okay, so normally when I do that, it kicks back a little bit. Like, you get pushed in the seat. This vehicle with just the sheer size and the fact that it's only got the 3.6 liter V6, it doesn't have all that gusto. But it does get going when you ask it to. Okay. With that in mind, is the 3.6 good enough for you, or do you need the Big Bohemoth 5.7 gas guzzling? Why are you saying all these beautiful words <laughs> about the 5.7? That's the one I want. <laughs> is the 3.6 good enough for daily driving? Yes. Is it good enough for my daily driving? No. <laughs> But if it's, if it's just for your wife or you and you just want to haul your kids around and you're not looking for a performance vehicle, yes, this is plenty power. I, it is a big vehicle. I can feel that getting behind the 
steering wheel of this thing. I am very used to my Porsche Cayman, which is a lot smaller. Are you brake tracking me? Yes, a little bit. <laughs> the brakes are a little different than what I'm used to as well. <laughs> Having driven like all of our Cayennes, how does this compare with those? This is good. It's not as fast. <laughs> I think our problem is we get into the European luxury segment, and which is just different than Ooh. the. Uh, there's a Levante. Yep. It it's is different. A, it is the Gibraltar Strait fart. <laughs> what? Because it's like the cool breeze going across the Gibraltar Strait. That's what Levante stands for. Oh my <laughs> just gosh. That. Okay, back to the Jeep. <laughs> we are used to European luxury vehicles. Yep. Right? And sports cars. This is about as good as you can get in the American segment. It's good. It's just... It lacks... I don't know... It's super quiet in here, and I like the emotion of a car, so that's what the luxury market's meant for, right? Is yep. it not? You're supposed to be completely numb to everything else around you, pretty much? Even in a Cayenne, you're getting that sound, which this has. Oddly enough, like, this sounds really good when you're on throttle. Yes, but, like, right now I'm just casually accelerating, and it's staying under 2500 RPM, and you don't hear it. Which is good. It's which is really it's exactly good for this car. <laughs> what you want it to be. I would say that the Jeep Grand Cherokee L ticks pretty much every box I could think of for somebody who is in the market. For a American six-row luxury SUV. What other... Six-row, nope, six passengers. Six rows, well, that's big. <laughs> that's like a 15 pass. That's bigger than a 15 passenger van. <laughs> We are now in a clown car. <laughs> Let's get outside of this, show them the beauty of it again, and give them our final thoughts. And that is the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Real question is, would you buy one? Uh, if I take all of my knowledge on how amazing European sports SUVs are and throw it out the window? Yes. But the key looks pretty cool. The key is cool. If you want an American vehicle, an American SUV, this is definitely on the top of the list. Yes. If you want an American SUV, this, I probably would get it over like the Wagoneer because the Wagoneer is just a little bit bigger, but. And you're paying a lot of money because it's a Wagoneer. Yeah. I like the refresh on the body. Yep. The way that the nose looks now. It looks like a Wagoneer. Yep. I do think that the L looks better than the regular Grand Cherokee side by side. I do like that it has third row seating, seating for six. I you lost me once you said that it looks better than the regular Grand Cherokee, and then you also said you liked that it had the extra row of seating. I mean, I, I think it's kind of nice. Single man, married man, with kids, that's the difference. I'm just looking out for the family here. <laughs> I do think that the 3.6 liter is, is definitely good enough for a daily driving, you're not really towing anything, just a driver. It's a, it's a good vehicle. The 5.7 will get you more towing, it'll get you a little bit more rumble, and it'll get you a little bit worse gas mileage. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for coming along with us. Uh, it gets the nod for me. I do like it. If you are in the market for a large SUV with third row seating, I would say this is a great spec. I don't know if I... <laughs> I don't know if I would go lower than the Overland Edition. No, I would say the Overland... Uh, I don't know if you need the Summit though. No, you need the Summit Reserve. <laughs> okay, I think the Overland is a very good sweet spot yep, yep. <laughs> for the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys click like, comment, subscribe, awkward high five. And until next time, we'll see you in a cold climate.
Take me down to the river.